Welcome to High Life. Today we will be talking about a topic that doesn't often get talked about, and that is estate planning, also known as having a will. I'm sitting here with Mohamed Maria, the managing partner of Just Wills, the very first independent company offering professional will writing services for experts residing in the UAE. Hi, Mohamed. Hi, good afternoon. So let's start with the why. Why is it so important for residents here to have a will and especially experts? Look, I came into the UAE. First time I came, it was in 1998 from the UK. I came on holidays. I love the city. I love the country. Then around about 2003 to four, I just saw a gap in the market that when the property boom happened, people were buying, selling left, right and center. I remembered in the UK that somebody passed away owning a property and the family were clueless what to do. So when I came on my next holiday, I did some investigations and found out there isn't a system. Even the courts don't know what to do. So I thought, wait a minute, there seemed to be a gap in the market. So that's why I thought, let me set up Just Wills. Originally, it was a UK-based company. I've been with them since 1989. Mm. And now you can tell how old I am. So (laughs) I came in 2004 to five with the Just Wills franchise. And this is what I've been doing for the last almost 20 odd years. Why have a will? It's because everyone is now making the UAE their home. They're moving here. They're bringing the children here. The children are going to the schools. They're buying properties. They're having money here. They're having jobs. And over the years, sorry to say, you know, there's been cases where people have passed away. So having a will for me is very important, giving clarity on your wishes when you know more tomorrow. So what would happen, and I think this is a really important part because these are such interesting information that I don't think most people know. What would happen if someone passes away without a will? If you're talking about the bank accounts, it will be blocked in any case, whether there is a will or no will. So you imagine you have a joint account with your partner. One of you pass away. The bank is in form. They freeze the account. But what I want people to understand That's going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Visas are cancelled. So imagine if the sponsor passes away, the dependent visas are cancelled. There's nothing I can do. That's an immigration matter. Now, to add insult to injury, as they say, your home country is informed. So if you are from South Africa or Canada, many people don't know they freeze bank accounts there as well. So the... First three problems, and it could be in any order, and I cannot guarantee how long it would take for it to happen. Bank accounts are blocked, visas are cancelled, your home country is informed. When you are talking about your estate, when you pass away here with no will, the court decides who takes the estate. Not you, because you are no more. Every country has their own default law if you pass away with no will. So take the UK, for example. You don't make a will. Your family will end up paying 40% inheritance tax. Now, you can argue, say, wait a minute. I don't live in the UK. I don't hold a passport, a British passport. So why is my family paying 40% tax? It's because the assets in the UK... It's because you did not make a will. So to to save 40% tax, draft a will. Hmm. But do you think the government is going to come and tell you this? Of course not, (laughs) because they're taking your money. That's why having a will, you can avoid these situations. Now in the UAE, if you pass away with no will, it will go to their system. They decide. And I can assure you, whatever formula or in terms of how the estate is distributed will not be in line with your wishes. You've also, um, when we sat down to talk before this interview, mentioned that the will is there to get these bank account, bank accounts unblocked. Correct. So how does that process work? Because you said it will get blocked and frozen no matter what, but then the will is there to get them unblocked. So how does that work? So when the accounts are blocked, they need to wait for the court order to be issued 
to the bank, unblocking the account. So you have to go to the court. If you go to the court with the will, the court will respect the will and transfer the money to the beneficiary as per the will. If you don't have a will, the court apply their law, which will not be in line with your wishes. But the point I'm trying to get to is that you need the court order coming from the court, which means you have to start the process from the court. So don't think for a moment if you go to the bank with a will and say, hey, here's a will, give me the money. (laughs) The bank will say, sorry, you need to go to the court. Because only the courts are authorized to send the orders. How long does this whole process normally take? But let's assume that they are in the right frame of mind. You submit all the paperwork to the court on the first of the month. Within six to eight weeks, the court will send the orders to the banks to transfer the money. For me, the biggest problem is getting that paperwork together. Because many people don't even know what paperwork is required. You've also shared a case with me where this bank account freeze severely affected the corporation that was owned by this individual. So can you tell me a bit more about how this could affect corporations as well as individuals? So when it comes to personal bank accounts, the rules are black and white, that all single and joint accounts are blocked. And when it comes to companies, it's 50-50 because it's really up to the bank. Mm-hmm. Will the bank freeze the company account? Yes or no? I cannot even answer that question really? because it's up to the bank. Now, even if I tell you, speak to your bank and ask them, will you freeze the company account? I guarantee they cannot even answer the question. So you imagine if the company bank account is blocked, even they need the order, the court order, to transfer the ownership. But with a company bank account process, it's different to a personal process. So how does that work? First of all, You go to the court to open up a legal air file. The court will write to, say, the economic department first to transfer the shares of the uh, deceased to the beneficiary. So imagine, let's say, the the owner passed away, he's willing everything to his spouse. So the spouse goes to the court, gives the documents. The court will write to the economic department telling them Transfer the shares. So the spouse will have to go to the economic department first. Transfer the trade license from A to B. By the way, the company bank account is still blocked. (laughs) So once the trade license has been transferred to the spouse and you've got all the paperwork, then you submit that to the bank for the bank to amend the company bank account. And that will take time. That sounds very complicated. I'm sorry to say it's not easy. Why? Because if your trade license, if there is a local involved, when you go to the economic department to transfer the shares, all the partners have to be present. So Mm. one of the partners is abroad, cannot attend. You have to wait for that person to come back. So considering how corporate bank accounts, joint accounts and your personal account all get affected, What would be your recommendation in terms of an ideal setup for bank accounts? You know, banks won't give you the information I'm giving. And (laughs) sometimes I I have to be careful because I don't offend anyone. I don't want to tread on people's toes. But I look at the A, B, C, D route. Mm -hmm. So joint account, bank A. Husband, wife, bank A, you have a joint account. Husband has a separate account in his name in Bank B. Mm -hmm. Wife has a separate account in her name, Bank C. And the children, if there's any children, will have bank accounts in their names in Bank D. Why? If the husband is no more, the joint account Bank A is blocked. The single account in the husband's name, Bank B, is blocked. Bank C and D is not blocked. If the wife passes away, the joint account is blocked, her account's blocked, but the husband's account is not blocked and the children's account's not blocked. What banks here would look, want you to do is to keep A, B, C, D in the same bank. So you have all the accounts under one umbrella. That I disagree with. You segregate them, different banks. Now, when it comes to company accounts, it's a bit tricky because 
I would recommend you may want to set up an offshore company bank account so that they don't freeze the account. Or check with your legal department if they can give you some sign-in authority and there may be additional forms you complete so they do not freeze the company bank account. So I believe the will has five parts. Can you tell me what are those five parts? The first is who are the beneficiaries? Mm. Yeah. I mean, a good example, the wife will say, I'm not giving the money to my husband. If I pass away, he'll probably get married again. So why am I giving my money to him? She will say, I want the money going to my children. We have the husband saying, I don't want to give my wife all the money. She doesn't know what to do with it. I'd rather split it 50-50. So the first part is the beneficiaries. Who's getting what? Secondly is the executors. Who's going to execute the will? Now remember, in layman terms, the executor is the person going to the court to do with the paperwork. Remember I said someone's going to tell the court where to send the order? That's the responsibility of the executor. Number three, actually should be number one, if there's children, who are the guardians? The guardians are two types. You have the temporary and the permanent. Temporary are people living here who get to the scene quickly. Permanent from the home country. Another important part of the world is the jurisdiction. Where you, which countries you're covering? Hmm. Now, you might have assets in the UAE and you might have an offshore bank account in Singapore. So you need to look at the jurisdiction. You're covering the UAE and Singapore or just the UAE? I think I'm missing one part, aren't I? The asset coverage. The asset coverage. <laughs> Does the husband even tell the wife what is the internet banking credentials? Does the husband even tell the wife what is the passcode of the mobile phone? When I draft a will, I've covered A to Z. But you need to prepare an inventory, a list of assets, where you write everything down. So the asset coverage is everything. When I'm going to the court, or anyone going to the court, the executor, remember I said the person going to the court? If that person does not know where the assets are, do you want the court to go on a witch hunt, checking everywhere where the money is? Of course it won't. Yeah, of course not. That's why it's important to make a list. Okay, so someone comes to you and wants to put all this in a document and draft and register the will, how long would that take and what's the whole process of this? Look, provided you have all the information, and I must say the guardianship can be tricky, provided you have that information, having a will drafted within two to three days for your approval, it can happen. In fact, the fastest will I've drafted to date, when somebody was in the hospital, his days were numbered, and we got the instructions by 10, 11 o'clock, and we got the will registered four o'clock in the afternoon, same day. That's very Because impressive. he was so sure he was not going to live the following day. And he passed away two weeks afterwards. But we got the will registered. So it's not enough to just write it and sign it. It absolutely must be registered as well. Is that correct? In the UAE? If it's not notarized in the court, there's no way to guarantee its authenticity. Mm -hmm. That's why it should be registered in the court. This is what I keep telling people. And there's another misconception where people are assuming, oh, I've, in my country, I just can even draft a will in my own handwriting and get two people to sign it, and that suffices. I say... Well, we're not in your country, are we? We're in the UAE, so we need to abide by the UAE system. There is courts here to register the will. Do it properly. Spending money, people don't want to do it. It's upsetting, but they want to cut corners. I cannot help them in that. So they've written the will with yourself. You've registered it. What should be the next steps after it? Because I believe there's a roadmap following the registration even. A checklist. Make sure you have a list of assets. You remember the A, B, C, D bank accounts. Even the, if the, if, say the wife is working, get a separate visa, get off the husband's sponsorship, keep life assurance. 
why they freeze your bank accounts is to make sure your debts and liabilities are settled. In Europe, they freeze bank accounts, why? For inheritance tax. Here is your debts and liabilities. That's why I say to people, get life assurance. If you're working, complete the beneficiary nominee form with your employer. Now, if you look at the majority of the pilots working for the airlines here, for them, their life assurance they get from the employer could be up to three times their annual salary. That is, not, it's a, that is a lot of money to be ignored. But if you as the HR and you find out one of your employees pass away, how would you know where the money should go to? That's why updating the beneficiary form or having one is down to the employee. Now, I keep telling this person, get the form completed, mm. get it updated if necessary and share it with the family. So these are all housekeeping tips, the roadmap I give to people. Bank accounts, visas, life assurance, list of assets, beneficiary forms, even having your certificates, marriage certificate, children's birth certificates, have it fully attested. Have a letter of wishes template. And obviously have your will. And another document I strongly recommend to people is a power of attorney. So one of the documents you've mentioned is the letter of wishes. What would that cover? Letter of wishes for me covers the informal requests. Jewelry is one of them. So when it comes to your personal jewelry, you don't want to put this information in the will, who's taken what, because that may change. So I've seen some mothers, in fact, there was one case where the mother had like 50 years worth of jewelry and she had all these daughters and granddaughters and nieces. So she wanted a roadmap only for the jewelry. Mm. Now I say, don't put this into the will because more than likely you're going to end up changing this. So letter wishes is a good example for the jewelry. So when it comes to informal requests, I always recommend a letter of wishes. So we have a template. It took me many years to complete, but I just give you these sort of bullet points that you need to factor in when it comes to these matters. So, you know, jewelry is really usually top of the list. Family heirlooms, funeral arrangements, organ donation, um, charity. Maybe you're doing some charity. You want this charity to continue. Put it into letter wishes. Maybe there is some religious obligations. Letter of wishes. So this is a separate document. I make a reference to this document in the will. Is this legally binding? No. Letter wishes is just informal. Let's talk about real estate a little bit. So what do property owners and real estate investors in particular need to be aware of and need to do? Now, if the property is mortgaged to the bank, make sure you have life insurance to cover the loan because the banks want their money. And if you imagine you're the owner of a bank, you have a million customers. Each customer owes you money. Credit card, car loan, personal loan, mortgage, business loan. But everyone owes you money. Now, tomorrow, if you pass away, are you looking for the will or you want your money back? You want your money back. This is why everything is frozen. So the will covers the immovable property as well. But you need the court order from the court to go to the land department. If the property is mortgaged, you need the bank to claim the life assurance. Now, let's say you're buying an off-plan property. Now, it's very foolish of people to think that if they buy an off-plan property and there is a will, the developer should transfer the ownership. But for the developer to transfer the ownership, you've got to pay the developer the money off for the property. So let's say you're buying a property for one million dirham. You pay 100,000 and there's 900 balance. What, you think the developer is going to transfer, allow the transfer? without getting paid, they want their money. So life assurance, I don't sell it. Hmm. Just bear this in mind, that the will covers everything, but all liabilities need to be settled first. That's why if, when it comes to real estate, 
it depends if the property is off plan or it's owned. And if it's owned, is there a mortgage or no mortgage? If there's a mortgage, life insurance. No mortgage, okay, you don't need life insurance. But you have an off plan property, you have to wait for this apartment to be completed first. Pay all the outstanding loans to the developer. They will release the NOC, then we transfer the ownership then. These are all vitally useful advice. Thank you so much, Mohammed. This has been very interesting. Very welcome.